Hello there, welcome back to the YouTube channel. I'm back again and we're taking a break, break from Bloomborough today um, to go for a request that I had from one of my subscribers on Twitch. Um, Othros, who's one of my regular opponents on Twitch and one of my long-term subscribers, who's been subscribed to the channel for 18 months. I've reached out to a few of my moderators and people for the ones I haven't done decks for before and they asked me to look at Sir Eleanor the Discerning. Um, which is what I'm doing today. So here we go. I hope you like this, Osros. This is my take on it. So three and double blue for a star four human knight legendary creature. Um, Sir Eleanor, the discerning's power is equal to your number of cards in our hand. Uh, when Sir Eleanor enters the battlefield, we draw a card. Spells your opponent's cast that target Sir Eleanor cost two more to cast as well. So we have kind of a built-in War 2 for all intents and purposes nowadays. And yeah, it's a fun one. Mono blue, lots of card drawing. Yeah, it can't be that difficult to build, can it? Well, I found it a bit of a challenge, but this is what today's deck looks like. But before I go any further, please, if you can, hit the subscribe button here on YouTube. I'd really appreciate it. I'm desperately trying to get to 500 subscribers by the end of 2024. Um, as I record this whilst I'm on holiday, I'm sitting at 467, so... Yeah, 20, 33 people short of hitting that 500 target. So if you can help out and subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. But anyway, this is what today's deck is now. One thing I will say is expensive on tabletop. Not so bad on MTGO. There's a reason. Well, you can probably tell by the two bits of artwork why it's so expensive on the tabletop. So bear that in mind if you're thinking of building this. But here we go. Creatures, 21 creatures in the deck. Um, a lot of them do card draw, or help us draw cards. So like Baral, Chief of Compliance is here, um, so that we can make our instance and sorceries cost a little bit less. Duelist of the Mind is another star creature. This one is star three, and its power is equal to the number of cards you've drawn this turn. So it's always gonna be one, so that's not too bad. And whenever we commit a crime, you may draw a card. If you do, discard a card. Only triggers once each turn. Not many crimes to commit in this deck, but you know, extra card draw, we have that. With Cami of the Crescent Moon to start with. And then Caliph, beloved of the sea, makes an appearance. In creatures and enchantments you control have spells your opponents cast that target this permanent cost one more. Don't know why we don't see more of this in Commander. It's nice. Yes, it's only once more, but it takes things like Path to Exile to two mana. Um, terror to three mana, etc. So it makes things a little bit harder for your opponents. Um, Power is equal to your devotion to blue, so it's going to come in as a 2-3 on its own, and with Sir Eleanor in play, that's a 4-3, and it just gets bigger from there. Chasm Sulker is also here. Whenever we draw a card, put plus one, plus one counter on it. When it dies, we get all those lovely squid tokens, where X is number to pass us one, plus one counters. Detective of the Month comes in as well. Um, Ascend, as long as you have the city's blessings, agents, detectives you control can't be blocked, so, hmm, okay. And whenever you draw your second card each turn, create a 2-2 two, two white and blue detective creature token. That one I do like. Gadwick the Wizen, pump X into all of this, pump as much as you can into X to draw those extra cards. Loyal Drake gives us a card as long as we've got Sir Eleanor in play and her and this Drake tend to go along quite nicely together. Alandra, the Sky Dreamer. Um, whenever you draw your second card each turn, you get a Drake. Okay. And whenever you draw your fifth card each turn, Alandra and Sky Dreamer and Drakes you control get plus X plus X where X is the number of cards in your hand. This is probably the most expensive card I've picked up for a deck for a long time on MTGO, but I have picked one up, so I've just realised how good it is. And it might be that I do a whole deck around a lander at some stage. But at the moment, we're sitting in Sarah Eleanor's land, so hopefully he likes being there with her. Archmage Emeritus lets us get a card every time we use cast an instant sorcery. Curiosity Spellcrafter. Um, we have some tokens, obviously, you know, from here. Um, so drawing the cards off them is fun, but no maximum hand size, four mana for a three three of a flying. Yeah, right, that's fine. Filigree attendant is power is equal to the number of artifacts we control. We have a few artifacts coming up, so that should be quite big and it has flying. Body of knowledge. Um, power and toughness are equal to the number of cards in our hand, no maximum cards, hand size, and whenever it's dealt damage, draw that many cards. Bear that in mind. Cavalier of Gales is here just to give us a little bit of draw three, a brainstorm basically, draw three, put two on top. And then when it dies, we get to shuffle into our library and scry two. Like that plan. Defiler of Dreams is basically cast a blue permanent spell, draw a card. 
Arkansas, the omnipotent, tap it, draw three, pay four to return it to our hand so we don't lose out on it if we've got the mana available. Yep, I'm looking at card draw, so Consecrated Sphinx had to be here. And tomorrow, Azumu's familiar just makes that card draw even better because you get to look at the top three and pick one from there. Gets a little bit tricky when you're doing multiple draws in a turn, but you know, you get the best cards from top six, top nine, top 12, depending how many you're drawing. Agent of Treachery makes an appearance for the first time in one of my decks for a long time. I've avoided playing this as much as I can recently because I just got fed up losing to it and I didn't want to make anyone else suffer that pain. However, in this deck we do need some way of maybe nicking a big winner, so hence the agent is here. Ancient Silver Dragon does the hold card draw and no maximum hand size, assuming it connects once. And Jinga Taxis, um, yeah, at the beginning of your end step, draw seven cards and each opponent's maximum hand size is reduced by seven. Completely irrelevant if they have a thing in the play that says you have no maximum hand size, but otherwise they're playing off the top of their library for the rest of the game once you can get it into play. A few planeswalkers to help us draw. Party Jace is here. Um, Teferi, the Temple Pilgrims here, because we can do this every turn. Well, every time we draw a card, sorry, it's not the one we can do every turn. My bad. Um, but the amount of cards we draw each turn means we'll be getting a lot of counters on this planeswalker very quickly, and getting to the minus 12 shouldn't be that difficult. Jace, the Arcane Strategist, is also nice. Whenever we draw our second card, we get to put a plus one, plus one counter on a creature we control. Plus one and draw a card, and minus seven all our creatures can't be blocked, so we can Alpha Strike. And Mordekainer, um, um, coming in from Forgotten Realms land, draw two, put one on the bottom, or create Illusionary Dog, whose power and toughness are each equal to twice the number of cards in our hand. Or then minus ten, exchange your hand and library, then shuffle, you get an emblem with you have no maximum hand size. The minus ten, not too keen on, I've decked myself and killed myself with it. I did avoid um, Thassa's Oracle in this deck for various reasons. Um, if you want to play Thassa's Oracle and make it a little bit more powerful, well, a lot more powerful, feel free. But I've avoided it for this. Spell-wise, amazingly card draw stuff with a little bit of control. So Brainstorm, Serum Visions, Counter Spell gives us our control. Days Undoing lets us shuffle everything back in and get a whole, whole new seven and end of turn. Worth doing after the combat step. Same with Time Twister. Um, but at least that goes back into our graveyard so we can use it again and again and again. Inspiring Refrain, I've talked about it a little bit now, people still query me on this because of the spend three, but I think it's worth it, especially in a deck where you're trying to focus on getting cards into your hand, so it makes an appearance to, you know, get suspended on turn three, comes off on turn, what, six, and you get your extra cards, should help. Time Spiral, have to exile it, shuffle our hand and graveyard into their library, then draw seven and tap six lands, so you get to play with your new cards. Dig through time. The delve's quite nice, but we don't really want to do it. So if we can pay the eight mana to it, I'll be happier. But if we have to delve some lands away we don't need anymore, so be it. Same with Treasure Cruise. Um, you can get rid of seven and pay one for this and have a, basically an ancestral recall if you filled your graveyard up with stuff you don't care about. We have a fair few artifacts today, which is unusual since we're not playing anything like Urza in the deck, which you could put in, but I've again avoided it. Um, Jeweled Lotus is here just to help us get Sir Eleanor out a bit quicker. Lotus Bloom for the same reason, along with Mox Tantalite and Soul Talisman to give us permanent static mana sources. Spellbook does the whole no maximum hand size thing. I've included it, you don't need to, but I want another way of doing that, so it's here. Lava Boots protects Sir Eleanor once we get him in play. Soul Ring, Arcane Signet help us ramp. Folia of Fancies, again, another no maximum hand side. That's all players this time, though, so it does make Jinga Taxes a bit worse if you've got this out and Jinga Taxes comes down, so sorry. But each player draws X, then each player puts a number of cards equals number of cards in their hand from the top of their library into their graveyard. You can mill them out with this quite happily. Holy Mind keeps the cards coming. The boots, also another way of protecting Sir Eleanor. Thought Vessel, more land mana ramp. Um, no maximum hand size, thank you. Midnight Clock does the whole, let's put the 12th counter on, get there, shuffle everything back in, get a new 7, and then exile this. Temple Bell is a friendly artifact that not many people will destroy because they all hope they get a card, which they do with this. The Whisper Silk Cloak makes an appearance. Now, there was... 
a decision to be made about the things that could be blocked. And I went with a cloak because of the shroud. Um, trailblazer boots is also an option if you'd rather do that to go for the non-basic land walk. But I thought Whisper Silk, nothing can block it. At the end, it's done. Fonta Mythos for extra card draw. Vence's Journal for even more um, life gain. Well, more ways of making sure we've got no maximum hand size, I should say. Plus the life gain is very helpful. And the Magic Mirror. Um, gives us spells and sorceries. Whoops. Um, spells and sorceries cost one less to cast for each instant sorcery in our graveyard. No maximum hand size. And at the beginning of our upkeep, we put a knowledge counter on the mirror and then draw a card for each knowledge counter on there. Makes that Sir Eleanor very big. We have some ways to take advantage of the card draw. So we've got Wizard Class to start with, uh, which we want to level up to level three as soon as we can. So putting the plus one, plus one counters on creatures. Onomous Seas gives us a way to benefit from getting eight counters and getting the Kraken. Prof's Eidetic Memory, no maximum hand size, draw a card. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if you've drawn more than one card, put X plus one plus one counters on target creature, where X is the number of cards you've drawn this turn minus one. So it ignores your first card draw, basically your standard draw, for want of a better phrase. But everything else gives you a plus one plus one counter. Search for us, Canter gives us our 37th land and a way of making sure we can get the top four cards looked at and something we need in play. Archmage Ascension, after I played it the other day, I thought it went into this deck as well, so it's back again. Dictator Crucifix has got Flash. Play this at the end of your opponent's turn before your turn, so you make sure you get two cards. Ristic Study will upset everybody, I'm aware of that, but it's here. Jace's Sanctum, uh, whenever we cast an incident sorcery, scry one, and then they cost one less to cast. I mean, yes, there's only nine in the deck. I'm very much aware of that, but I still think it's worth having in here from my point of view. Um, you can drop it out if you want to play something else instead, by the way, just so we're clear. Um, Kuma's Awakening, Ascend, if as long as each player draws a key at upkeep, then if we have the system's blessing, only we draw the card. Teferi's Agent's Insight doubles up on our card draws beyond the first one. And Shark Typhoon gives us a way to win the game. Once we have it in play, we can start making all those X shark tokens whilst we cast all our non-creature spells. Land-wise, um, a few things that draw cards. So Arch of Orkansas here, Bonder's Enclave is here. Broker's Hideout goes and finds us an island. Karshal Vantress lets us scry. 25 islands. The Theatre Fetches is an island. Um, Maruku, Centre of the Sea, draws everyone a card. Mystic Sanctuary puts our instant or sorcery from a graveyard we've used on top of our library. Nykthos lets us do all the extra mana we need. Obscura Storefront finds an island. And then Reliquary Tower from no maximum hand size. And Temple of the False God for that little ramp bump is where we end up with this deck. So I hope you've enjoyed the little Sir Join um, from Bloomborough today. Um, Othros, I hope that's what you're looking for on the deck. So I hope you enjoyed it, my friend. Um, you can see me play this very soon. This is coming out on the Thursday, which will be my first stream back from holiday. So whether we get round to playing Sir Eleanor tonight, I don't know. It may be Sunday after you've watched this video. Um, but we will see. We'll see how tonight goes when I'm streaming. But for now, thank you for watching. Take care. Hopefully you've hit the subscribe button. Hopefully you've come and followed me on Twitch to see me play these decks. And I'll be back very soon with some more deck takes. Take care. Bye.